Here in the Kingdom of Lum, the Council of Wizards work tirelessly to maintain peace. One particular wizard, let's call him Z, is the head of secrecy, and he has set up a crystal ball network to update the other council members throughout the kingdom. The crystal ball network functions like this. Each ball has its own address number, and there's a central pylon that directs incoming and outgoing messages from each crystal ball. Z has developed a spell that carries information, and it is relayed to a given recipient through this pylon. There are some details of how the IDs of these devices are used for communication, but I talk in detail about the basic network set up in this other project if you want to learn more about how it's initially created and how information is exchanged. For now, the most important thing is that Z needs to share updates on the kingdom's happenings and problems with his colleagues. But there's just one issue. A group of evil warlocks is constantly trying to steal the kingdom's information in order to use it against them. What makes them evil, you ask? Well, just look at that menacing face. These warlocks have developed spells to tap into the crystal ball network with their own crystal balls and copy the incoming and outgoing information. This becomes apparent when attacks on the kingdom are made that abuse private information. Luckily, Z is an expert in magimatics and has some ideas for how to protect his messages. He's been working on a spell that shifts each glyph of his message by a certain number so anyone looking at it would just see nonsense. Z wants to test this out, and has the opportunity to meet up with his colleagues in person, and tell them the key and spell for decryption ahead of time, so he doesn't need to send it over the pylon network. This method works for a while, and the warlock attacks lessen, but before long, it becomes clear that the warlocks are deciphering the messages again as usual. It seems this method was too simple, and the warlocks developed their own spells to decipher it. Z gets back to thinking, and wonders if the glyphs could be shifted more dynamically. Instead of making the spell's key a single number, the key itself could be a string of glyphs, where each glyph represents a number, and that number is repeatedly added in sequence to the message. This approach works pretty well for a few weeks, but inevitably, the warlocks develop a new spell that can decrypt this method too. Z goes back to the drawing board. The methods he has tried so far hold up for a short time, but they aren't complex enough to resist the warlock's countermeasures. Luckily for Z, he's gotten some extra assistance sharpening his skills with the help of today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform with thousands of interactive lessons on subjects spanning math, programming, science, and even AI. In particular, they have a new course on probability, which is one of the fundamental fields of math that's related to this video. So whether you want to sharpen your math skills or learn programming to help create projects like this, Brilliant helps your problem solving and critical thinking by giving visual lessons that help develop your intuition on a range of different topics. I've recently been using it to brush up my own math skills, and it's a really effective learning tool because it gives small tasks for you to solve to make sure that you actually understand what you're doing. To learn for free with Brilliant for 30 days, just visit brilliant.org slash wunuminal, or check the link in the description, or scan the QR code. They're also offering a special 20% discount off their premium annual subscription, which gives full daily access to all their content. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to it. With his mind at peak performance, Z goes on to think for weeks and ends up developing a very complex spell that he is confident cannot be deciphered. We won't go into detail on how this spell was produced, but we will focus on the essential thing that it needs. This spell requires a rune as input, which is like a type of key, and this rune is used for both encrypting and decrypting messages. This means that both the sender and the receiver need access to the same rune, but how can this rune be safely transmitted? It can't simply be sent across the pylon network, because the warlocks would intercept it. A rune could be shared in person, but what if a new recipient suddenly needed to receive an urgent message? How could a shared rune be established with that person? During Z's conception of this system, he came up with a ritual for securely creating a shared rune with another wizard. The ritual works as follows. Both Z and the recipient cast a spell to create a secret rune. Z sends out two other runes through his crystal ball, and these are public runes and can be known by anyone. We'll call them rune G and rune P. The spell Z has developed works by combining runes to create a new rune. 
and the most important thing is that Z is confident that this new rune cannot be divided back into its constituent runes. So each party takes their private rune and combines it with a public rune G to create these new runes. The two parties send these new runes to each other, and then combine it with their own private rune. Another cool and very important property of this spell is that it doesn't matter in what order runes A, G, and B are combined, the resulting rune will be the same. This means that Z can take rune A and combine it with rune BG, and the other party can take rune B and combine it with rune AG, and both parties will have created a shared rune ABG. So the parties have achieved creating a symmetric rune ABG that can be used for the new encryption spell. And the warlocks are unable to derive the values rune A or rune B from this rune because only BG and AG are sent across the pylon network. And as was stated earlier, the constituent runes cannot easily be deduced from the combined runes. It's important that the warlocks cannot extract the values rune A and rune B because without these values, they cannot reconstruct the rune ABG. This system works really well, and it seems like the warlocks are unable to decipher any of the transmitted messages. However, as time passes and members of the council come and go, this system of creating a symmetric rune shows its limitations when one member needs to message another, but that other member is not currently available to exchange their runes. It's true that members could create their runes ahead of time as long as the public runes were available, but Z has recommended to create a new set of runes for every communication because this reduces the chance that a rune will be deconstructed over time. And if a rune is ever deconstructed, then it will only be able to decrypt the small set of messages encrypted with that rune. The council then asked Z to create a solution to this problem, and he came up with this. He developed a ritual which allows a wizard to create two unique runes, a private and public rune. These two runes share a special property where either one can decrypt messages encrypted by the other. So, if Z wants to send a secret message to party B, Z can take the public rune from party B and encrypt a message with it. Then, party B takes their private rune, it's called private because only they know it, and they can then decrypt the message. Similar to the previous spell, despite their interconnection, the private rune structure cannot reasonably be deduced from the public rune. With this system set up, any wizard can perform the ritual to create their private and public runes for another wizard to message them, or they can find the runes of a recipient wizard on the network and send a secret message to them at any time. There's another cool feature of this ritual where a wizard can prove that they're the one who sent a particular message by using their private rune to sign it. I won't get into full detail on this process, but the important takeaway is that anyone with this rune pair can verify that they are the ones sending a message, which helps prevent warlocks from impersonating a wizard. Z's most recent inventions have been extremely effective in securing communication between the council, and the kingdom achieves a period of prosperity. However, there are still attacks on their network infrastructure that happen from time to time and the warlocks are occasionally able to trick the wizards by performing a double impersonation. There is still work to be done. Z has ideas for magical barriers, pylon enchantments, and identity sigils, but that's a story for another time. If you'd like more videos on topics like this, leave a comment down below. Thank you all for watching the video, and a special thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring the video, and thank you to my supporters on Patreon. Until next time.